Dye Mat channel welcome. Right, this video is a full instructional guide to do a collet, and the collet design is a split tapered V4 claw collet made specifically for a cushion cut stone. Uh, it was with straight daylight. It's a nice little collet, it's right here. Look, you've probably already seen it on the YouTube thumbnail. Um, doing the claws is a bit more difficult. Well, it's quite a lot more tricky than doing just single claw and they're tapered as well and they're splitting off to a V and you've got to get four all identicals. So there's a lot of in-depth information on how I achieved that in the video, but to kind of counterbalance the difficulty of it, the main body of the collet, the four-sided structure that the claws sit on, uh, I made that in an easier way than normal. So normally I would like precisely cut, like measure where the corners got to go, cut and file them out a special way to get them folded up exactly where I want didn't do that on this one, made it an easier way. So if you check out the video, you can find out a way to actually produce a collar easier. Um, don't have to do it every time, but there's no reason why you couldn't just make all your collars that way. Kind of, um, a bit of a bit of a trick of the trade to actually end up with exactly what you want, but doing it in a quick, easy way. So uh, yeah, I decided to do that to kind of balance out the difficulty of the claws, uh, actually made the body of the collar easier than normal. So if you wanna watch the video, you can find out how to do that. And uh, I'll get the video going after I so thank you to new patrons last few days we got. We got Arnold Rodriguez, we got Leah Chavez and Emmanuel Spitaloraktis. <laughs> Apologies if I butchered your names. I do really appreciate becoming patrons, but please don't expect me to get your names correct. <laughs> um, yeah, I ask for patrons on the channel because the financial contributions enable me to keep this channel going. Like I've got over 20 years, 25 years uh, experience hand making jewelry full time. And uh, yeah, I was trained up to a good level. I got uh, basically a lot of experience making very expensive jewelry for very special gemstones. So I was trained up to a good level to make things perfectly. So the customers who were commission commissioning me to make their pieces were happy to pay literally, more often than not, tens of thousands of pounds. So yeah, I got good experience. So I'm sharing everything I learned uh, in the past on this channel. So I'm going through it bit by bit. It's a long, long, slow process, but I've got a lot of stuff out. Been uploading for three years or more now. And uh, yeah, if you wanna check out previous videos for free, you're welcome to do that. But if you wanna enable me to continue sharing more of what I've learned, I've still got a ton of stuff that I haven't got touched on yet. Uh, yeah, you need to become a patron. So it's patreon.com forward slash dime out. I'll link in the description anyway, or you become a dime out member. Look for a join button on the YouTube page. Uh, if not, just uh, click like and subscribe. And even if you don't do that, you're still welcome to watch the videos, the stuff we put out for free. So yeah, let's get into this video. My stone is a square cushion cut. Quite a nice stone. I like the shape. Uh, yeah, about eight, just under nine mil, like 8.9 sort of ish. Right, it looked difficult to show you, but I'm holding it in the correct position. I would say put the stone upside down, but then you need the stone at the correct height because obviously the height difference affects the size of the collet we're making. If the stone is lower, the collet will be bigger because it's touching at the larger section of the stone. At this sort of stage, you want to be careful with even with lemel in your skin or especially like pliers and needle files and stuff if they're below you, you could get really unlucky. You might accidentally drop that and it'll bang against your steel tools and break a stone. Working with things like tanzanites, they can be really expensive and they're, they're easy to break easy to scratch, easy to crack if you drop them, even ultrasonic in, they can break. What I do is I put the stone in the, I put the stone in the collet, nice and straight, as if it was set. Put something in that fits, usually a needle file works. So as I was touching the bottom of the stone, put my thumb, move my thumb up to the bottom of the collet, and I want to pull that out, I can see the amount that's sticking out is how much space there is under the stone. So I've been around mine with dividers, two lines parallel, obviously, always working from one side. The top's nice and flat, so a divider, the top half, and then I adjust the dividers bigger and then do the bottom half, so working from the same side, and that way you definitely get them parallel all the way around. Well, that's gotta be perfectly vertical as well, so it's not one claw or the other, it's actually the gap down the middle. And that should sit, that edge and that edge, perfectly parallel if it's square, and it should just sit like that without rattling. If it's got a bit of a da -da 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 -da, then it means they're not, those two claws touching are not flat against the block. So that's a, a good test as well. When I've got more claws on there as well, I will, you can find out everything you need to know at this stage before you start doing solders. Yeah, file it in a little bit more. So anyway, making progress, just adjusting it bit by bit. So 
making a bit of progress now. I'll just do a quick visual check. Uh, I would hold it like this, make sure the ones in the middle are directly vertical to your horizontal collet, and then also the claws either side need to be at the same angle as each other, like mirroring, nice, everything nice and symmetrical. Uh, I put it back on my block. I just want to have a check over what I did, because I always go on about accuracy and hand making stuff, but the, the fact is, Everything you make is handmade, so you're never going to get perfect accuracy, but there's no harm in trying, is there? Uh, so, yeah, I just go around it, look, making sure they all line up nicely. Look, well, that middle one goes straight up. It's ready for the next step of, like, uh, all the surfaces smoothing, a bit of rubber wheeling and ready for polish and stuff. But as for the actual essence, the foundation of it, the structure of it, there it is, all done.